I was very concerned when I was at the Department of Energy about global warming, and in particular about the greenhouse gases that not only the United States but the rest of the world was emitting. We always knew that greenhouse gases would cause a warming in our atmosphere. What we have come to realize is that it's not just a question of reaching a sustainable amount of production of energy that emits CO2, but actually requires a reduction in the CO2 emissions that we currently emit. We've just come across one prospect that I think is particularly promising. About half the electricity that we consume in the United States each year is produced from coal. That's a lot of electricity. It's not going to go away. The question is, how do you find and capture and deal with the CO2 that's emitted from coal-fired power plants? We are working with the utilities that produce electricity from coal to take that CO2, extract it from the gases that these power plants emit, and then store it in the ground forever in an aquifer perhaps two miles below the surface of the earth. This is called carbon capture and sequestration. The University of Texas at Austin is a huge player in both areas. We have great research going on in the actual capture technology, which is the critical front end, and we have unequal capability in the United States and globally in understanding how to put that material into the subsurface, where it can go, and how it will behave. Our idea is to take advantage of the fact that we, in Texas, sit on top of aquifers that are loaded with methane or natural gas. The concept we're exploring is whether we can use that natural gas to offset the cost of carbon capture. In addition, the liquid that contains that methane in those aquifers is hot. It's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That has energy as well. And so what we've done is we've combined both the heat and the dissolved natural gas in these aquifers and shown that, in theory at least, we could offset the full cost of carbon capture, pressurization, and sequesterization. There is as much, well actually more, dissolved natural gas in those hot brines in just Texas and Louisiana than all of the uh, reserves of natural gas in the entire world. So we're talking about a staggering amount of energy, right? But there's also equal or maybe even greater amount of energy in the hot water, right? Now, if you just produce those wells, it's very, at best, marginal uh, economically. It would be hard to make a profit. But it turns out if you put the CO2 in, the CO2 helps displace the methane. The water doesn't like to uh, dissolve the methane and the CO2 at the same time, so it prefers the CO2. CO2 is about six times more soluble in the water. And so that's perfect. Methane comes out, we produce it, we leave the CO2 in. We get some hot water while we're at it. Meanwhile, uh, Gary Rochelle comes along and says, oh, I could use some of that energy in that hot water, it's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, to help capture the CO2 from the power plant. I'm Gary Rochelle, I'm a professor of chemical engineering and I work on the removal of carbon dioxide from power plant stack gas. So in a mean scrubbing we make up an, a, a water solution of an organic material called an amine. It's a somewhat basic material like lye and that, that solution will react with carbon dioxide which is somewhat acidic by an acid base reaction and, and it makes the CO2 dissolve into the solution and then we take this solution and we heat it and boil it and when we boil it the CO2 comes back off again but this time it's pure CO2 instead of being mixed with the flue gas and then that pure CO2 is compressed and made into liquid CO2 much like you would use for uh, uh, for coke production or something like that. To me the exciting part of the new concept is, the, is using the geothermal heat to boil the uh, amine solution. So ordinarily when we, when we regenerate our solution, uh, we, would, we would use steam or heat 
from the coal-fired power plant to boil that solution. And then the solution, which now has less CO2 in it, is returned back to the absorber and we pick up more CO2. So we, re we reuse that solution. Uh, the heat that go that's used for that solution would normally reduce the power plant output. Instead of doing that, the concept is to drill a well, bring up hot water from 10,000 feet, use that hot water instead of heat from the power plant uh, to, to boil the water that we need to regenerate the amine solution, and then return colder water back into the geothermal formation 10,000 feet down, let it heat up again, bring it back out. And so that concept, even by itself, uh, provides significant energy savings because we don't have to burn the coal, that, the additional coal that would be required to generate the heat. If we look to our energy future and the role that alternatives and renewable energy will play, uh, you have to go pretty far out to have them playing more than a few percentage points in our future, which means we're going to have to be dependent on our traditional carbon-based fuels for several decades into the future. If there was ever a place that has the ability to be creative and innovative, in using them in the new paradigm that we're in in the 21st century. It's the University of Texas at Austin. So we should not neglect the need for innovation and creativity in our use of traditional fuels because it's based on a strength we have and it's based on a realistic need that we're going to have throughout much of the 21st century.